Mal war doch Alencia! Princess Alencia. Huh? What is she wearing? What's going on? Why are you dressed like that? I thought to join you in the battle lines. Is that a Pegasus? Where'd you get that? He belonged to my great grandmother. I'm a bit nervous about riding him, but I'm going to try nonetheless. I appreciate your desire, but your retainers will never allow that. Will they? As for that. Did you agree to this, Joffrey? No, personally, I'm against it, but she is the princess and it is her wish. I can do nothing. The princess's great grandmother wasn't begging on Pegasus Land of Summer right now, before marrying into House Crimea. Princess Lindsay herself is skilled at both riding and swordsmanship. As a child, she was granted permission to train in case the need for her to fight ever arose. Behold the Pegasus uniform, all sorts of help of our House Crimea affair. We did fear much that we would never see a chance to use them in the proper stead. Oh, Muse of Fire, I cannot find the words. You hold a light that dares to shame the sun. Our prince is clad in raiments of fair and fair and fine. Give courage, love, and vigor to our cause. I know she got some spirits. I'm surprised you were able to hide armor and flying horse from the Dane army. <clears throat> prince Freddy foresaw a time when the princess would need them, and bid us to convey them from the palace. Prince Freddy's thoughts were always with the princess, even as his life abandoned him. Be true to your heart, and live life as it dictates. Those were his final words, sir. My lord uncle was always the one person who understood me best. Even though I'm dressed like this, I have no experience and do not expect to fight as well as the rest of you. But this constant leaning behind and doing nothing, it sets my heart beating with such unease I fear it may burst. Even if I cannot fight, I can use the staff to heal the wounded. If I could just if I could save just one soldier, it would mean so much to me. Please, my Lord Ike, I promise to obey orders and stay out of harm's way as best as I can. Lord Ike, we will take responsibility and guard the princess. It's her heartfelt wish. This is not something that I can not allow or disallow. She is my employer. If that this is what your princess wants, all I can do is comply. Be careful, will you? Oh, thank you so much! Let us go forth like sunlight to the dawn. Let's see fights, and Crimea wins the day! Hear, hear, Bastion. Holy whoa, that's a lot of enemies. And there's a boss. We're at full panel now. You see the enemies rip roaring, ready to go kick ass. I there are more enemy soldiers than we expected. Just from what I can see now, there are double our numbers. We must assume that the four houses many more troops. This may prove to be a long battle. Even if they have twenty times our numbers, we must overcome them. In this war, there can be no retreat. So welcome to the obligatory. Everything is going to be thrown at you. So bring your best chapter. We got a ton of units to worry about. Warriors, a couple of sages, and those meteor paladins everywhere, wyvern lords, generals, a couple of feral ones, a few snipers, halberdiers, swordmasters, and this guy, Bertram. He's also a paladin. He has a rune sword which works off of magic, which is why he has a high magic stat, and saps HP. He also has a spear and elixir. And he has not. As you can see, he's pretty formidable. He can tank for relatively well. Joining us is Alincia, Princess Crimea. As you can see, she's only level 1. She comes with her with her special sword called the Amidi, which is basically a brave sword on, on slight speed. It's basically her own personal sword. And it gives a gives plus three to defense and resistance resistance when it's equipped. Shows us immense stuff. She's almost the pe the Falconite I've so longed for ever since playing F4. Almost one level one le one weapon rank shy. If you're going to be using her, um, I recommend going back to base and pumping a ton of bonus experience into her. And then raising her as best as you can by healing and attacking and having booch kills. She's not much of a fighter, but she's a great healer. And if you just and if you don't really use her by anything but healing, she's good. It's just that. General Bertram, the army has risen to the bait. Orders, sir. Your orders, sir. General, um, how should we make answer? 
Turn the ground soft with blood. Make a graveyard of this place. Bury them all. Yes, sir! Soren, do you have any information on the enemy general? Our intelligence reports say that the commander of this army is Bertram, one of Dane's four riders. One of four riders? This is on par with that woman we fought early, General Latrine? That's not necessarily so. The name four riders is given to the four persons of highest ability among the king's advisors. So the merits can change, is that it? Who are the current four riders? First, there was General Latrine, whom we defeated at Riven Bridge. Marsha, smoldering good. Then the man we face today, General Bertram. Next is General Bryce, who served the previous king. And finally, the enigmatic general known as the Black Knight. Those are the four. This is the same Black Knight that murdered Commander Grail? Of that, there appears to be little doubt. Tell us, Soren, do you have any more information on General Bertram? I know not where he hails from. He appeared after the fall of Crimea and has quickly gained Ashlark's favor. So, he's a man of no mean ability. Like the Black Knight, he always wears his armor and never shows his face unhelmed. Some say he's not even in his armor, but it's inhabited by an ancient specter or demonic creature. It's all just superstition and rumor designed to heighten fear of the man. It's not important. Once we cross swords, we'll know the truth. Then we can discover for ourselves that he's just a loudmouth braggart, or truly a monster. As long as our blades can wound him, I care not either way. Let's go! Sound words, Ike! So as you can see, Alantia's forced into this fight, but she's gonna sit this one out. Oh, and by the way, for one thing I forgot to mention, if Valencia is KO'd in battle, she counts as dead, and it's an instant game over. Just wanted to point that out. Animation's gonna be off for now, since this chapter is gonna be long with, with them on. I guess we have to see a blade. Well, Ike heads for the heads for Bertram Square since it's a siege mission. Marsh is gonna have to do her best, to, her best job to lure all the enemies away from Valencia. Just cause you know I don't want a game over now. If you didn't cause a game over, then I wouldn't fret too much. Cut. Cut again. You see their paladins are just like charging at you. Some of them will just try to will just try to lick their wounds when they're wounded. Because there are ample healers nearby everywhere. Cut. Cut. Yeah, it feels good doing this again. Case in point. There's one. Rungvo. Tink! He fails a sniper. Stop that. That's that that that, that, that that's unconf that's uncalled for. So I guess pretty much going to ignore these guys and just head straight for uh Bertram side. Meanwhile, Marsh is gonna damage as much as she can, while keeping the enemies at bay. They have to circle her. I should probably go for the sages, since they're the ones that can heal. I guess I'll do that next turn. When I, when, I, when, I, when I, you know, my brain is actually working. Bow attack! <laughs> um, bow attack! Uh, ow! That lightly tickled. Ha! What? This is how you use a sword! <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
can't believe people say that I actually have a good voice for Marsha. That kind of creeps me out in some way, somewhat. Stan. Double Stan. Double Stan. <laughs> stan. Oh! <laughs> what? Mm. Aether. Shorty, you can. Oh! Okay, seriously. Yeah, these sages, these sages gotta go. <laughs> no reason to worry about these guys because they're probably going to try and wall. They're probably going to try and wall like. <laughs>